They're still the Heidelberg Warriors, I remember that. Yep, play basketball for Heidelberg. episode we were on the Prince of Wales Islands up here by Craig. Now we are going to go down to Heidelberg. This will be a trip down memory lane for Eric since he spent two years of middle school in Heidelberg. This zooms in a little closer on Heidelberg. We plan to tie up at the dock at Heidelberg so that we can walk around the town and Eric can reminisce on his youth. A bunch of seagulls feeding on something. But we're going to anchor up outside of Heidelberg the night before so we can time the tides for the approach. We are headed into South Pass Cove right here. It's only a three, honey. Good shelter is available here for one craft when weather is churning up the seas in Sequan Narrows. Anchors 24 to 40 feet deep with fair to average holding. anchored right here for the night. South Pass Cove. Right now we're in about 58 feet of water. We can't see it getting too rough in here. Seems like a nice little anchorage. We just came from that direction. And we'll be going that direction when we leave. It's a nice little tucked in space. Smells good. Smells like woods and lumber. And did she made it the whole way? We even had internet most of the time. No cell, but we had internet. So we've been here all night. Eric seems to be having problems with something on the anchor. He's got that boat hook out like as far as it can go. I guess he has some seaweed on the anchor that he's trying to get off. That's gotta be some seaweed. He's really having to work at this. And notice he does have his life jacket on. He's been out there working on it now for a while. It looks like he finally got it off. I've been inside manning the boat so that we stay in the wind. I think I've been doing a superb job. It's like blowing 30 to 40 knot gusts of winds out there, which is why this is a little bit even harder. And look, now it's starting to rain on him. He's gonna be happy when he comes in. So what was going on out there? Uh, it was the worst uh, um, kelp we've ever had on the anchor. It's like, uh, there was some mud on the anchor, but I'm not sure if it was just the kelp that was holding the boat place last night. It was, it was brand new. It was, it, was, it was a workout pulling up on the boat pole and trying to get it off being wrapped around the anchor. Huh. Would you go back to that place? Yeah. Not after that experience. No. Either that, I was thinking maybe maybe what you do is you make sure you try to lift your anchor straight up from where it went in so that you're not pulling a whole bunch of kelp around. Okay, good but, to know. But I'm sure it was a kelp forest in there. So we are headed through here, yep. and then we're going to head through these yep. narrows, yep. and then 
we are at Heidelberg. Well, those are the Narrows and that's Heidelberg. I'm gonna have to do lines again. All this uh, anchoring has got me uh, feeling pretty lazy. Eric used to come in and out of here as a kid in a skiff. Never even thought twice about it. This time he looked at the depth and he was like, well, maybe we should go around. But I guess we're going through it. But I noticed he just slowed down. Thirty-one feet, thirty feet. Yeah, we're supposed to go down about thirteen with a rock kind of in the middle of the channel. What I sure don't remember this like this. I don't uh yeah, back in the day. Back in the day, we had skiffs that didn't have depth sounders on them. We'd run all over the beaches and so forth. And just counted ourselves lucky for not hitting a rock, I guess. Or you went out when it was low tide, and you uh, ran around to see where the rocks were. Are. You still do that? I still do that. So how, how far down are we supposed to get? Uh, I mean, low water, it says 13. And there's a rock in the middle? Kind of in the middle of the channel, you can see it. Up there. Okay, we're down to 12 feet. That's one shore. Here's the other shore. This is the shore that has a rock down there somewhere. And there's Heidelberg. How low did we get down? 10.8, uh, I think, is what I saw. Well, we have a six foot draft, so we have four extra feet. Heidelberg had a population of 376 as of the 210 census. Eric spent 9th and 10th grade in Heidelberg. The population while Eric was living there would have been between 214 and 298. The name Heidelberg refers to the Haida people. The weather wasn't so awesome when we got to Heidelberg. The next day, the weather cleared up, so we took off to tour the village and let Eric reminisce. This is the school. Eric remembers the school and a gymnasium. It's changed a little. There's a whole bunch more school here than there was before. And this, this totem park wasn't here then either. So these houses over here were... And the church over there. The church has always been here. Look at the Catholic church. There's still the Heidelberg Warriors, I remember that. So, yep, yeah, play basketball for Heidelberg. Actually, one of these houses had teacher's house. That was like Price's house and Pat O'Neill's house was right here. It's and now, gone missing. No, uh, I bet, yeah, no, this might have been this place. And so this used to be the pool hall uh, and uh, actually probably had soft drinks and so forth. And, well, Heidelberg was, was a dry town at the time, but anyway, all the kids would come here and there was two pool tables and a jukebox and it was only open for a couple hours every evening, like on a Friday or Saturday or something. But uh, it was run by Esther, uh, I can't remember what her name, she was an older lady at the time. And her house was next door, so that's her old house there. And, uh, anyway. 
What did she used to sell? Used to sell cigarettes. All the kids smoked back then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even when I got to high school, there was a smoking area for the college, for the students. <laughs> Things have changed a little. Yeah. yeah. You can see the fish trying to swim upstream here. Yeah. Dogs around here don't get tied up. They just get to run loose. And our dog is a bit of a problem with that. But yeah, you can see all the fish trying to swim upstream. Oh, there's a dead one right there. They smell too. This used to be where the A and B hall was. Yeah, it looks like it's a community building. Yeah. So we lived in this house for a year um, when my dad was here. And it had an oil stove, and I can remember we would roll 55-gallon uh, barrels from the from the dock down there, of fuel up here, and we pump them into a tank that was gravity-fed for the oil stove that was in it. It was a pain in the butt. Was it better than the boat? Yeah, it was drier, and uh, yeah, it was. It was better than the boat. The Lady Catherine was my dad's boat, and the boat that we spent a year living on. I think it was the first year we were there. The second year, Dad decided he wanted to repower it. Uh, it had twin gas engines in it, and he put in twin diesel cats and uh, uh, replaced a gas generator with a diesel generator. And so that's why we had to move up to the house. Back in the day, the uh, rolling the barrels up to the house from the cannery, which was quite a ways, um, was done on a dirt road that was full of potholes. Uh, the roads to there today in Heidelberg are paved, so it would have been much easier to roll those barrels to the house. There used to be a store right there. What's this? Uh, it looks like it's a grocery store. Do you want to go in? So they do have a small grocery store. Candies, chips, other snack goods, drinks, and they have ice cream. And their ice cream is about $10 pretty comparable to the other places. A few other frozen items. This was a cannery? Yeah, and there was more buildings further out. It looks like they still do a little seafood processing, but it doesn't look like they do much. It used to be a pretty big uh, deal. Uh, employer in the community during the summertime, of course. This is Heidelberg's floodplain dock. Uh, when I lived there, there was not a road. Today, there's a road between Craig and, and Heidelberg. And while we were there, I don't think a single airplane flew in. Uh, but back in the day, um, that was one of the, that was probably the primary people, way people got to Heidelberg <coughs> and other communities in Southeast was by floodplains. Um, we're based out of Ketchikan primarily. Not quite sure why it is, but I, I guess I'd note that the uh, way that Heide, the Heidelberg is spelled is different than the way the uh, Heide Inges uh, spell their uh, their names. So. And I remember Alma Cook. She was a she was the public health nurse when I was here too. So she's had the clinic here in town named after after her. That's cool. Yeah. There's the main post office in Heidelberg right there. And I remember now that uh, zip code nine 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 two two. Yep. Is there a secondary post office? I'm not thinking so, <laughs> but that's the main one right there. Heidelberg has a very nice dock facility um, and looks virtually empty. Uh, very, very few boats in there uh, these days, and I remember quite a bit more fishing and, and fishing boats um, that the families had in, in Heidelberg. Seining was a, a big deal at the time.
You come into Heidelberg. Don't park at the end of the dock. There's all kinds of seagull stuff. Bird guano. Yeah, it's a mess. And and they don't have electricity. Um, even though Wagner says that there's electricity, uh, there's no electricity and water is uh, not. They turned off some of it probably because it's getting to be winter, but there's only one spot where we can get water on the dock here now in September. Good to know. Nasty gulls. Nope, it's not a real fire. It's just a Netflix fire, but it sure was nice. Well, we're leaving Heidelberg. It's still a little dark out. But, uh, should be light by the time we go. So this is the harbor and this is the transient dock. This is one where Eric said there were a lot of seagulls, a lot of poop. We are moored on this dock, which is right next to, it's not even next to, it's connected to the transient dock. Up ahead of us, there's that open area and we didn't go in there. And what we did find out from somebody who lives here is that there is a boat that is sunk down there. So something to check on if you're going to go in there. It's kind of drizzly and rainy. Southeast Alaska, fall day. Our Starlink worked with some interruptions here in Heidelberg, but if we've been depending on our at and we wouldn't have had internet. So that was kind of nice to know that the Starlink did help. Goodbye Heidelberg, it was fun. Was it fun going to your old stomping grounds? Oh, yes to no. I mean, yeah, it was, it was okay. It was, it's okay. <laughs> it's totally changed. Totally different place. Okay. Yeah, totally different place. I, that's one thing I remember around this place was like every couple of days, it just, it just would howl. But, uh, but then the next day, it was just after the storm let up, it was beautiful. <laughs> that's been our experience. <laughs> you do want to follow the markers. I'm reminded of the time when uh, the boat was being repowered that we decided we needed to have more water on the boat. Uh, it carried 300 gallons of fresh water. And so we decided to tow it. Um, Dad had a 13-foot Boston whaler with a 40-horse Johnson on it. And we decided to tow it over to the cannery and get water, which was where the water was. There wasn't water at the dock down inside. And when we do it, when we did it, uh, I remember looking down to when we were pulling it and just seeing the sand off that spit. Um, got in some pretty shallow water. It didn't run into ground, but uh, the, the bars and so forth around Heidelberg are pretty tricky. So yes, Kimberly's right. You want to make sure you're looking at the markers. Look how pretty it is this morning. Eric has really been wanting to go back to Heidelberg, and I'm so glad that we could do it, and I'm so glad that we could stay on our boat during the visit. Hit subscribe and join us on our next journey. Have a see you next time.